Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas, and joining me today will be the executive chef at Studio Montage Laguna, Craig Strong. And Craig uh, has this beautiful, refined Mediterranean cuisine. But at home, oftentimes, he likes to direct that towards the cooking of Spain, specifically Barcelona, where he cooked and lived. Craig, welcome. Thank you for having me today. Oh, I'm so excited. Paella. It's so popular in, in Barcelona. It is. It's the national dish of Spain. It's what people think of when they think of Spain. In the two years that I was there, I just fell in love with it. And it's versatile for entertaining, right? It is. It's this great one-pot dish that you bring out with this great presentation. It has as many recipes as there are mothers. So you've got a beautiful paella pan here. It looks like it's had some fun. It has. Yeah. But can I I use a deep skillet? You could, but this is the one that's traditionally used for paella. And what do we do first? It begins with a little bit of olive oil, right. and then we're gonna put in some zucchinis here. Yeah, these are baby zucchinis cut on the diagonal. They are, with a little salt and mm -hmm. pepper to give them some seasoning. I like them to get a little brown even is nice. Mm -hmm. The base of what lots of Spanish cooking is, is this sofrito. So sofrito is made out of slowly cooked mm. onions and garlic and tomato, it has a little bit of bay leaf and thyme, and you cook it down, 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 down until it starts to caramelize. Now I use bomba rice. Mm -hmm. Bomba is the most traditional rice used for paella. It's a short grain rice, very similar to a borio rice. And then the next thing that's important for this flavor flavor is saffron. Now's the time that we can add the stock. Okay. Kathy, would you add a, you bet. about a quart of stock? Now, we need to season it. I put in a little bit of salt. And for the first 10 minutes, just stir it around and let it get going. After that, add just the right amount of stock until the rice is cooked. And then don't stir it after that. I'm going to taste it. I can feel that the rice is about halfway done. So if you would add maybe four more ladles, we'll put in some peppers. I have some olives here, some beautiful fava beans, and a few tomatoes, those zucchinis that we cooked off earlier. And then I like to finish it with a little bit of parsley and a kiss of olive oil. You don't mind if I eat in front of you, do you? Buen provecho. <laughs> Mmm, that's delicious, Craig. I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. It's great sharing it with you. <laughs> Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. Roasting cauliflower with a little olive oil and some garlic makes it irresistible. Start by cutting the cauliflower into florets. And I think the easiest way to do it is to cut it in half. Cut it in half again, and then just simply cut the cores out. And then you want to cut it into maybe one to two inch pieces. Okay, and now for the garlic. You want to start by blanching the garlic for, oh, about 20 to 30 seconds in boiling water. If they're fairly large, you can cut them in half lengthwise, like so. Now you want to add about three to four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. You can do this in a bowl if you like, but I, it saves time to do it just on the rimmed baking sheet that you're going to use to roast them on. And then this is ready to go into a preheated 450 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. And I like to give them a nice stir about halfway through turning them over so they get nice and crusty and caramelized on both sides. Look at this beautiful cauliflower out of the oven. It's all beautifully caramelized. I'm putting some freshly ground black pepper on the top and a little bit of kosher salt. This is good hot, cold, or at room temperature. Trust me, it's delicious. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new. Have an adventure. <music>